Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning worship service. You're very welcome. I trust and pray you're all keeping well. And if you're a visitor with us, then we especially welcome you and trust you'll feel at home with us and that you will be blessed around the word of God today. We're here to worship the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made, and we want to rejoice in it and be glad and give him thanks for all that he means to us and for all that he has done for us on Calvary's cross. And so let's uh, turn to the word of God this morning as part of our worship. And let's read, we're in our second study in the book of James. Uh, last week was our introduction, verse 1. And we want to continue now uh, looking at the first eight verses. James chapter 1. Uh, 1 to 8. Let's read the word of God. And this morning, this is living under trials, okay? Living under trials. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally or generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Well, we know that God will bless the reading of his precious word. Let's pray together. Let's still our hearts, close our eyes. And in our homes, let's seek God's face and ask for his blessing this morning. Okay, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, what a privilege it is to come into your presence this morning. And what a privilege it is to be able to come into the very throne room of heaven through your Son, our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we want to worship you this morning. We acknowledge, Father, that Jesus is our great high priest. He is worthy of our praise. And so we give you, God, all glory, honour, praise, and, and we exalt your name on high. 
Fill us this morning with your spirit as we come before you with thankful hearts. Lord, because of you we have hope today, a hope that is steadfast and certain. And so as our King and as our great High Priest, you have gone before us to help us and you're the God who intercedes for us today. And so we just want to thank you and we want to tell you that we love you this morning. Thank you for your wonderful salvation. And we come before you with confidence, knowing that Christ has clothed us in his perfect righteousness. And we bear his name today. May our praise, Father, and may our lives be pleasing and acceptable unto you. May our hearts adore you today, for you are a loving Father. You are a good and generous God. And you're a good and gracious Saviour through your beautiful Son, the Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, O God, for protecting us and helping us again this week. Thank you for watching over us and keeping us safe, even in the midst of all that is happening in our world with this virus today. Still, in 2021, we're still fighting, we're still struggling. But we thank you that we can rejoice and be glad in you. Even, even in our despair, even in our loneliness, we remember that your mercies are new every morning. And we say with the hymn writer, great is your faithfulness. We say with Jeremiah that you are a faithful God. Lord, we commit ourselves to you afresh this morning. We bring our families before you, we bring our loved ones, our children before you, and we pray that you would be gracious to us. Help us as a fellowship, we pray. Strengthen us by your grace for another week. Save us and save those who are still outside the family of God. Draw them to you in love, O God. Display your power in our world. Fulfill your divine purposes not only in the world, but in our lives, through your people, through the many trials of life. May they help us to grow in godliness and bring us to maturity, we pray. As you test our faith, may it not break us this morning, but may it build us up in our faith and strengthen us so that we may love you and worship you and serve you. Be with everyone who is struggling today. Continue to be with all our elderly. Think of elderly parents today. We think of those who are grieving today, especially the, the Owens family, and we, we commit them into your loving, tender, caring hands today, O God. And we pray, O Father, that you will just continue, Lord, to presence yourself with them and help them, sustain them and comfort them at this time. Be with, So be with our loved ones. Be with those who are grieving, or elderly, or missionaries. Be with health professionals, or doctors and nurses. Be with our care workers, support workers, our domestics, and all our NHS today. Lord, be with them. Undertake for them. Keep them safe. Bless them, and we thank you. Thank you for them. And Lord, we ask that you would bless your word to our hearts today. We thank you for your word. And as we read it, as we teach it, as we proclaim it, Help us to see that you are at work in our lives and that you're a loving God, caring God, a gracious God. And grant us faith to believe and to trust in you. For we pray all these things in and through our Saviour's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Well, we're going to sing now uh, before the throne of God above. I have a strong, a perfect plea. We have a great high priest who intercedes for us today. And let's worship him. Let's give him thanks today. And once we sing this great hymn of faith, then Gary and Chloe is going to uh, 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 speak to the boys and girls today. I think they're going to maybe share a wee story. So we're going to be blessed. Lord bless, bless you. Thank you, Chloe and Gary. And then we're going to sing then another we saw for the boys and girls. Amen. Thank you.
sad to say God because everyone is bad bad bad. God said to Noah I'm going to splash 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 them all away but I promise I will keep you and your family safe safe safe. God told Noah to build a very big boot chop 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 chip 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 bam 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 bash 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 Noah did exactly what God said. The animals came into the very big boot, two by two. Roar, roar, oink, oink, ba, ba. Noah and his wife and their three sons and their wives all went into the ark with their animals. God shut the door to keep them all safe, 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 just as he promised. Drop, 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 drip, 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 plop, 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 plop. Splash, 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 gush, gush, gush. The rain came down for 40 days and 40 nights, just as God promised. And the land was flooded so that everything was underwater. God washed away everything that was bad, bad, bad. But Noah and his family were safe, safe, safe in the very big boot, just as God promised. The water drained slowly away, glug, glug, glug. Thump, bump, the very big boot came to rest on Mount Arata. Noah sent out birds to see if the land was dried again. When the dove came back with an olive leaf in its beak, Noah knew that flood it had ended. Caca, 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 caca. Noah, his family, and all the animals came out of the very big boot into the wonderful, washed, clean world that God had given them. God had kept them all safe, 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 just as he promised, and God made another special promise that day. People will still be bad, 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 but I promise I will never again wash, wash, wash them all away. And God put his bow in the sky to remind everyone of his promise. So every time you see a rainbow, remember that God always, always, always keeps his promise. Well, thank you very much, Chloe. That was really well read. And we hope that you've been blessed, boys and girls, as you have listened to this great story from the Bible. 
I love the story of Noah. It's great to know that if we have faith, if we trust in God the way that Noah did, then he will help us and he will guide us and he will keep us safe as we go through life. You see, Noah was told to do something by God that that seemed crazy to everyone around. Uh, Noah had never even seen rain before, but yet uh, God told him to build a boat because he was going to send a flood. And sometimes, boys and girls in life, uh, you will find that God will ask you to do something in life, that he will speak to you. And, and that is our prayer um, as a church, that God would use the boys and girls of our fellowship as they grew up and that he would speak into their lives and tell them to do things that maybe seems crazy in our minds. But yet God has a plan and purpose for it all. And so it's wonderful. We think of missionaries this morning. We think of Jonathan and Catherine Galt. God told them to go to Mozambique and to speak to the people that live in these far off lands and to tell them about Jesus. And they obeyed. That's who I'm reminded about this morning and other missionaries too, who it might seem like a huge thing to, to leave our homes and to go and, uh, and to take the gospel message uh, to the other side of the world. But yet when we obey, God blesses and he uses us to do mighty things for him. So boys and girls, have faith today. Trust in God. Read his word. Read these wonderful stories in the Bible. Uh, these are great little books and they're illustrated by Jennifer Davison, a, a local girl from Brasheen. And uh, th there's a whole series of these books and you can collect them. So we encourage you to be reading, boys and girls. Mums and dads, read these stories at bedtime. Get the word of God into our children's lives that they might grow strong in the knowledge of God and the things that he has planned for us. So we pray that, that you will be blessed, that you will keep safe and that you will keep uh, trust in God. Let us just pray. Father God, we thank you for another Sunday when we are able to come together, uh, even online, Lord, just to worship you and to praise you and to learn about you. And Lord, we thank you today that we have uh, heard this great story of Noah. And Lord, we thank you for Noah's faithfulness and for his trust and for how he obeyed your command in his life to build a boat, to build an ark, that would save him and his family, Lord, from a great flood, whenever he had never even seen rain before in his life, but yet he put his trust in God. So, Father, we pray that for our boys and girls today, that, Lord, they would put their trust in you, that they would um, trust you for everything that they need in life. Should that be school? Should that be friendships? Should that be troubles or worries or, Lord, anything that they might be scared of? Lord, that they would just put their trust in you and know that you're near to them and that you're close to them and that you are the very best friend that they will ever have and that will ever need, Lord, as they walk this road of life. So bless them, each and every one today. Bless the mums and dads, the grannies and grandas, aunts and uncles and everyone who is watching today. For we pray this and ask these things in your precious name. Amen and amen. <laughs>
get to know our God again The Lord is good, the Lord is strong And we will live our lives for Him Thank you so much. What a blessing. Amen. Well, please uh, turn to James chapter 1 again. Um, if, you, if you haven't already uh, kept your Bibles open, uh, let's look at this great passage in James 1. Life or living under trials. And as you're looking up James 1, let me ask the question, how would you finish this sentence? Life will get easier when dot dot dot. Okay. How would you finish that sentence? Would you say, uh, perhaps life will get easier when this virus goes away? Let's hope so. Or would you say, life will get easier when my health improves? Would you say, life will get easier when my family starts talking again? Because for some people, that's a very, very real thing. Some people maybe haven't spoken to parents in years or spoken to siblings in years and you're hurting. Uh, uh, and, so, and so you're maybe saying today, yes, life will get easier or you're hoping that life will get easier, better, when my family starts talking again, when there's real healing and reconciliation. Or w w perhaps you'll f you could finish it this way. Life will get easier when the children finish school or finish university, when they finally... Um, be, uh, 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 can earn their own money and I no longer have to hand out and dish out all the time. And that's a very that's a very valid thing. The bank of mum and dad will not always last forever. Or maybe you're saying, maybe you're saying whenever the kids go back to school, um, uh, you, you know, you're fed up homeschooling, teaching at home, you're pulling your hair out and you're thinking, no, life will get easier for me. It's probably for the moms anyway. When, uh, when when the kids go back to school in a few weeks' time, let's hope so. Let's pray for that. Or maybe it's none of those, and maybe you're saying, "No, life will get easier when I when I finally leave home." Um, maybe you're, you're a young person, uh, a young adult, uh, and you're still living at home, and you're thinking, "No, no, I need to leave." And you think the grass is greener. That's what we say to our kids all the time. Oh no, you think getting away is the answer, and it's not. But, because you, you'll find that the grass isn't greener. It's not better. But perhaps you're a young person and you're saying, no, you believe that life's going to get easier when you finally leave home. Or maybe it's this one. Life will get easier when, when I have enough money to retire or when we have enough money to retire. Maybe it's none of those things. But the point is still the same, isn't it? We all have our whens. When, when I have enough money or when such and such. We all have our, our whens. And all of us, all of us are looking to forward, working towards, longing for that, that better day, aren't we? But the reality is that, that hoping for and longing for and waiting for that day in the future when life will get easier and better most of the time doesn't come what happens for example what happens if that day never comes what do we do how do we cope when when life doesn't go the way we expect it to go when life doesn't turn out the way we want it to turn out you see living for tomorrow living for a better day does not in fact help us to live for today. It doesn't help us to live under trials, does it? And James here wants us to live well. That, that, that's what we need to 
we need to see as we begin our study uh, here in, in chapter one. James wants us to live well, especially under trials, whenever life becomes hard and challenging for us. Last week, remember, we saw that James is the half-brother of, of the Lord Jesus, and yet he tells us that he is a bond servant or a slave of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, James understood who Jesus is. He didn't at the start, remember, we saw that last week, and he, uh, and, 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 uh, he didn't believe, but now he believed. He fully understood who Jesus is, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, he, if you like, he gives us his testimony, telling us that he is a bond servant, a slave of grace because of the transforming grace of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so James was a changed man, a transformed man, a man who, who loved God and loved God's people now, especially those who were dispersed, those who were scattered, those who were living in exile outside the kingdom of Israel or the land of Israel. And so this letter was written to them and for them, to comfort them and to encourage them in their faith. And as we live as exiles today, as strangers living in this pagan world, we can say that this letter is for us. This letter very much is for us today. And the trials that we are facing today or that we will face in the days, months or the years to come. And so James wants us to live well and he wants us to live within the context of the gospel, okay? That's how we can live well today. Living within the context of the, of the gospel, of what Jesus has already done for us so that we can live for the glory of God, amen? This is so important as we begin our studies in this little letter of James. And so this morning, James will show us how God is at work in our lives through hard times in order to grow and develop faith in us, okay? And so it's important that we understand what James is doing here. So let's set this out then and keep this in our minds as we go through this this morning because God is at work in our lives, amen? Well, here's the first heading that I want us to consider this morning, the purpose of trials, okay? The purpose of trials. Verse 2, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. And the word trials is an interesting word. It means multicolored. Okay, so keep that in your mind. Multicolored. And the word trials uh, can also mean testing or temptations. It's the same word actually found in the Lord's Prayer, for example. Do not lead us into temptations. Okay, or into trials into testings it's the same words now we should all have our christmas trees down by now right uh adrian have you your tree down uh we should all have our trees down but think about the think about the lights on the on the tree okay think about the lights uh anyone use multicolored uh lights this year or maybe uh on your on your fireplace maybe you had you had a special uh, decoration over that and you maybe used colored lights well, think about, think about coloured lights flashing, flickering on the Christmas tree or, or over the fireplace. And, uh, or maybe they change colour. Uh, some lights do that. And, and depending on the colour that is flashing, it can change the colour of the room, can't it? Uh, well, James wants us to see that, that our trials or the testing of our faith comes at us uh, in all different ways ways that's what james is saying just like multicolored lights uh, another word to notice here is the word fall or another translation to, of that word is meet um, when you fall into various trials and this word is only used a few times in the new testament and one of those times is in the story of the good samaritan in luke 10 and in verse 30, Jesus said this, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho 
and fell among thieves. Fell among thieves. The same word that James uses here. And so what James is telling us is that trials will come our way, will hit us suddenly and out of nowhere when we least expect them to come. Okay, They will come and hit us like a, like a fate train. And isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? Uh, for, for those of you that have faced many trials and various trials, different trials, one day you're feeling fine, for example, and the next you, you find yourself in A&E. &E. And, or you maybe, you've maybe tested positive for COVID-19. Weeks have passed. Uh, since you've since you've seen your GP and you think to yourself, well, no news surely is good news. But then the phone rings and it's your doctor wanting to see you again or telling you to go straight down to a &E, straight down to the hospital. You've had a heart attack or you're having a heart attack. You go to work just like every other day and... The boss asks to see you or the manager wants you to come to his office and you think to yourself well maybe you've done something wrong or maybe maybe they just want to inquire about the job or or ask you a question about something instead you're told sorry you're no longer required we need to scale down and there's no work for you and you find yourself redundant paid off and you're questioning how am I going to how am I going to cope with the mortgage and how am I going to provide for my family and so on? Well, James says that these and in fact more are the kinds of things, the various trials that that we face at some point in our lives. Some will some we will see coming, but the reality is many we won't. There'll be, there'll be a surprise, but trials will come and they'll come in different ways and different shapes and different colours and different sizes. And doesn't this really sum up what life is like living in this fallen, broken world today? I think it does. I think it, it sums up. Uh, it doesn't matter how well we try to, to run away from our troubles or stay safe. Trouble and trials will always come knocking at our door. They'll always find us, won't they? No matter how careful we are, no matter how, um, how uh, we, we, we try to stay away or steer away from them, they'll always come. Now the question is, how do we cope when trials come? How do we cope when trials come? Or let me put it another way. In what way do we respond when trials or testing comes our way? How do we respond? And, and when we break it down, I think there, there, there are only two responses, really. Two responses. One, one is to blame God and become anxious about our situation. Is that fair? And many people, in fact, respond this way. They will become angry with God, they will stop trusting God and then wonder to themselves, why is this happening to me? Or why is this happening to us? Is that fair? And, and many people are in that position, uh, are thinking that even, even, to, even today. And, and all this does, in fact, it causes more trouble, more worry, more anxiety. Um, does that make sense? Um, and so that's the first response, to blame God and, and, and become anxious about our situation, worried, troubled about it, okay? Now let me say this. If you subscribe to a, a health, wealth, prosperity gospel, okay? If you subscribe to that, then you will respond like this. To respond to, to the first response, what I've just uh, mentioned. Because your default is 
God will always keep me safe and healthy. God will always keep me safe and healthy. And when and when when tragedy hits, when trials come and difficulty comes knocking on our door, then we buckle and we don't know how to cope. And so we blame God. Uh, we blame God because we do not have a proper theology of who God is and we do not under fully understand the purposes of God and trials you see and so many people who subscribe to a, to a health wealth prosperity gospel find themselves in this category is that fair um, I, I I think it is I think this is why so many today are are crushed in their spirits and broken today. I think this is why so many walk away from the Lord today and why so many are anxious and afraid today. And they lack the faith to trust in God. The second response then is found in verses three and four and James teaches us this. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Now before James said this, what did he tell us? Count it all joy when you fall into various tri tri trials, knowing, verse 3, that the testing of your faith produces patience. Okay, so so here we have James, James's theology, James's doctrine. Okay, and it's important that we grasp this, that we understand what he's teaching us here. Is he saying here, or teaching us here, that we're to be joyful when trials come? We're to be joyful about our trials. Is that what he's saying? So, for example, whenever death comes and robs us of a loved one, we're to say, count it all joy, brother. Count it all joy. Is that is that what James is teaching? Or when a loved one is fighting for their life in the intensive care or they've been involved in a tragic accident, have we to count it all joy? Is that what James is teaching us here? No, I don't think so. This is not what he is saying. This is not what he's teaching at all. This is in fact wrong. Um, completely wrong. Uh, so what is James teaching us here? then about trials. Do you see the word consider here? Or, or the word count? Count it all joy? Well, that's that, that word means to adopt a new outlook, okay? What outlook then is James referring to? Well, he's saying here that we must have the outlook or the mindset that whatever happens to us or Whenever trials come, we must remember as God's people that, that God sends them into our lives not to hurt us, not to harm us, not to destroy us, but he sends them into our lives because he is working in our trials for our good. And we must remember that God is loving and patient. And kind and good okay we must remember that instead of fixing our focus on our circumstances James wants us to to fix our focus on the Lord and I think that's key because if we fix our eyes on our circumstances then we will we will sink won't we just like Peter trying to walk on the water remember when he looked at the storm, when he looked at the sea, the raging sea, crashing all, he began to sink, didn't he? He began to fall. But whenever he fixed his eyes on the Lord, he was able to walk on water. And so, so, so we, must, we must keep our eyes focused on the Lord. And why is that so important? Because when we fix our eyes on him and focus on him, it reminds us that he, in fact, went before us. That he is the one who endured trials for us. He is the word. He is the one who suffered for us and faced death for us. 
because he loved us and loves us today. And he is the one who is able to help us. And so that's why it's so important that we have this outlook, this mindset, okay, this new mindset that, that when trials come, they're coming because God is at work through the trials, because he loves us, because he is doing something. And so the purpose of trials is to produce something in us, okay? God at work in us. And so James teaches patience. We must have patience. We must wait upon the Lord. Steadfastness, that's what patience, that word means. Steadfastness or perseverance. I love that. The perseverance of the saints. It's a doctrine not taught all that much today, I have to be honest. But but James here, he's, he's weaving it in. To, uh, the perseverance of the saints. And how we must, instead of giving up, we must keep plodding on. And keep trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep fixing our gaze upon him. One commentator says this. Patiently enduring whatever comes without allowing distress to influence one's distractions or one's convictions. Uh, that's so helpful, isn't it? I, I, I find it helpful anyway. And, and that's true. It's absolutely true. In other words, when trials come our way, okay, we're to patiently endure them and trust in God without being influenced or swayed one way or the other, okay? I think that's helpful. We're to remain steadfast, strong, unmovable, like a mighty oak tree that we find in the Old Testament. In the book of Amos, we're to be like that mighty oak tree that endures, that is steadfast. And so God is producing something excellent in us through trials. Amen? You can be sure about that. You can be sure about that. Let me try and illustrate it this way. Whenever a new aeroplane, um, or before a new aeroplane goes into production, okay, it first must pass the stress test, okay? The stress test. You see, every part of that new plane needs to be tested to its limits. Now, why does it need to be tested? Because a plane, especially, same with a, a same with a car, a motorbike, okay? But especially a plane, the stress test, it has to be tested to its limits because there cannot be flaws. There cannot be defects or, or any weaknesses in the structure or in the making of, of that aircraft. There can't be. Because think about it, it would not be good for the airline or for, for passengers if, if the wings weren't strong enough and they began to fall apart, disintegrate in the air. How would you, how would you land the plane? What would you do? You would crash. It wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good if the rudders, you know, the, the, these things that go up and down or the tailgate, okay, at the back, it wouldn't be good if, 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 if they got you up in the air, but they, but they couldn't get you down or they wouldn't move. They stopped working. How, how would you, how would the pilot be, be able to steer the plane and, and move the plane? And so every, every inch, every part of the plane is tested to its limit. It would be disastrous if the plane, again, here's another example, couldn't handle the pressure of flying at 20 or 30,000 feet in the air. Could you imagine? You, you imagine the pressure, okay? Think about the think about the, the the stress test and pressure that's on a plane, and imagine imagine if that crumpled up. Imagine what that would do to the the the, the passengers on the plane. Would would be all well. We would we would die. It would be as simple as that. And so and so, if you like. 
if you, if we can use this analogy of the of the aircraft of the plane, I'm sure you would all agree that that testing, okay, the stress test, is a good thing. Okay, when it comes to aircraft, testing a plane to its limits is a good thing, and so it's a good thing for God to test us. It is a good thing when trials come because it's producing something wonderful in us. God is shaping us, changing us, transforming us. Amen. So that's the purpose of trials. Here's the second point. The goal of trials. The goal of trials. James is telling us here that testing now, trials is a good thing for us. Yes, it will be hard. Yes, it will be painful and stressful and so on. But through the, the stress test, through trials, God is producing faith. He's producing strength and maturity in us. Verse 4. But let patience have its perfect work. Okay? So don't give up. Let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Love that. One of my favourite verses in the New Testament. I love that. And so brothers and sisters, let me say this before we move on. The word perfect here does not mean without sin, okay? James is not teaching perfectionism here or sinless perfection here let's be clear about that this is not what James is teaching okay for example in chapter 3 he will go on to say we all stumble in many in many ways or in many things okay so James is not teaching sinless perfection here what he is teaching or what he is doing here he is simply pointing us to Christ he is simply pointing us to, to Christ and reminding us that the goal of trials is Christ-likeness. That one day, one day we will be perfect. Not in this lifetime, but one day trials will, will finish the work of redemption, the work of salvation, completion in us. God will finish his work in us and he does it through trials, through testings. And so the goal of trials is Christ-likeness, isn't it? It's godliness, holiness. Holiness is what God is working in us. Be holy is the command, for I am holy. Now we can't do it in ourselves, but God by his spirit through through testings and trials, through life. Well, God can do it in and through us. Amen. And so that's the goal of, of trials. This is why James goes on to say, notice the connection. Notice the, the flow of, of the passage. Verse 5. So, so then, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally, or generously and without reproach and it will be given to him to her amen isn't that wonderful wonderful so how how can we grow and mature and become more christ-like under trials and testing how can we rejoice even think about joy how can we rejoice when all we want to do is to cry and to crawl up into a ball and, and run away how can we rejoice in, in the Lord? James is saying here, by asking God, by asking God, by coming to him, by praying. That's what James is saying here. Do you see that? Do you see the flow? He's saying, we need to come. We need to come. Not run away. Not bury our heads. We need to come. And we need to come and ask for help, for strength, 
for joy, for wisdom. This is the flow of James, of what James is teaching here. Isn't this wonderful? And so life isn't, now listen to me when I say this, life isn't then about gritting your teeth and hoping for the best. Okay, that's not the Christian way. This is not how we live our best life. It is not about gritting our teeth and hoping for the best or hoping for a better day. Pretending that everything's, everything's okay when it's not. No, that's not what James is teaching here. Saying, I'm grand, I'm okay. When we're not okay. Life instead is coming to the Lord. You see, it's coming to the Lord and throwing ourselves on his mercy. Crying unto him and saying, Lord, I can't do this, but help me. Lord, I am struggling with this. The weight of this is going to cause me to buckle. But Lord, give me the strength to carry on. Give me the strength, Lord, today to hold on. And when I can't hold on, I know that you're holding on to me. You see, it is coming to the Lord and throwing ourselves upon him. Lord, I'm not sure how I can... How I can get through this. How I can keep going. But Lord, guide me. Guide me through your word. And grant me wisdom today to know your ways. To know your purposes. You see? That's what James is teaching us here. And notice, and notice the encouragement that he gives us. And let him, let her ask of God who gives to all liberally or generously and without reproach and it will be given. Amen. And it will, see the promise, and it will be given. But we need to ask, you see, we need to ask. And so our God is not wicked. He is not wicked, as, as some try to say today when they look at the evil in the world and they, they accuse God of being wicked. He's not wicked. He has not abandoned us. He has not forgotten about us. He is the sovereign Lord who cares about us. He cares about us and he loves us. And he is there. And so we worship God today and serve God who loves to give and to give and to give and to keep on giving to his children you see he loves to give to his children and he loves to see us coming to him and asking lord help me today lord give me grace today lord give me strength today and so god loves this is why we have access into his presence through the lord jesus christ and so when we come and we uh, and uh, and notice he gives without reproach james says what does that mean it means that god will never chase us away he will never he will never um turn around and say to us mark that's enough that's enough or you've had enough you're not getting any more okay Without reproach, brothers and sisters. Without reproach. He will never, ever stop giving to his children. To you. May that, may that encourage your heart and bless you today. This is the gospel of God's grace. Our God is a good God. And he is a generous God beyond our imagination. And all we have to do, James says, is come before him. Ask in faith, believing that he can answer. That he will answer. Amen. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Verse 7. For let not that man, that woman, suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, a double-minded person, 
unstable in all his ways. So we've looked at the purpose of trials. We've looked at the goal of trials. Now let's consider very quickly the faith in trials. The faith in trials. Faith is the central concern for James in his little letter here. Okay, If we're not trusting completely in God through his word, then we're either trusting in ourselves or trusting in something else. Okay, It's as simple as that. If we're not trusting in God, then what are we trusting in today? Someone has put it like this, and I love this. The Christian life is like a tea bag, or a tea bag, sorry, a tea, not a tea bag, a tea bag, okay? It's, it's only when you put it into boiling water that you can begin to see its true colour. Love that. Isn't that wonderful? And so the Christian life is like a tea bag, it's only when you put it into boiling water that you begin to see its true colour. I think that's so helpful, isn't it? And so whenever the testing of our faith is, is being dipped into boiling water and, and the temperature is rising and we're beginning to... What's it doing to our faith? What's it doing? Or let me put it like this. Are we allowing God, the expert craftsman, the expert tea maker, are we allowing God to make beautiful tea out of us? To carve, think of a tree, the big oak tree, and God, the, the master craftsman. Are we allowing him to, to craft something beautiful out of us, in us? To make something usable in us. To make us usable, purposeful, producing spiritual growth and maturity in us so that we are being rooted and strengthened by the word of God. Are we coming to God through faith? Believing today, believing that he is good and he is generous. Or... Is our faith so weak today that we're like the double-minded person? Like the waves of the sea tossed by the wind, unstable. I, I trust and pray that we're not. Because according to verse 7, notice what James says. What does he teach? The person who doubts, the person who wavers, the, po the person who is unstable, who has weak faith, even though they may come to the Lord, will not have their prayers answered. And so it is my prayer today that we will not be like the double-minded person, unstable, having weak faith today. But I pray that, that you will allow the Lord, the God, of the maker of heaven and earth, the God who made you, who formed you in, in your mother's womb. I, I pray that you will allow the Lord to shape you and mould you and transform you and do something beautiful in you so that you will grow in your faith, so that you will mature, become more Christ-like. We need faith. We need faith today. We need to trust in the Lord, believing that he knows what is best for us, always working for our good. Let me finish with this, and I promise I'm finished with this. If you're a person who is prone to doubt today, if that's your default, and you're a worrier, you're a, and, and it causes you to doubt, it causes you to waver under trials, okay? And, test, and you're tested, and you, you maybe buckle here and there. The stress test is too much. I want, you to, I want you to know and I want you to believe that God will still be patient and gentle and gracious. Okay? I want you to know that. I want you to know that there is forgiveness with God. 
even when we feel him under trials, there is always grace. That God is patient with you. That God is gentle with you and gracious. And I say that because I want you to think about Doubting Thomas. Remember Doubting Thomas? And, 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 and remember that, that, that the Lord was patient with him. Do you remember how he gave him time? In fact, he gave him eight days before, before Jesus appeared before him again. So he was patient with him. He was also gentle with Thomas. And I love what Jesus said. What did Jesus say to Thomas? Reach your finger here, Thomas. Reach your finger here. Look at my hands, he says. Reach your hand here. Look at the nail prints. And put your, uh, uh, and put your hand in my side, Thomas. Do not be unbelieving, Jesus says, but believing. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. You see, Jesus was patient with them. Jesus was gentle with Thomas. And, and, and how did Thomas respond? My Lord and my God. You see? My Lord and my God. Jesus was working in Thomas. Jesus was strengthening his faith and, and after his great confession notice what Jesus notice how Jesus treated him Thomas because you have seen me you have believed and so Jesus gave him the assurance Jesus treated him with much grace here and he gave him the assurance Thomas because of your confession, because you have seen me and you have touched me, you have believed. And so he reassured his brother. He reassured his doubting Thomas that his faith was genuine. His faith was real. Isn't that wonderful? Love that. And so brothers and sisters, wherever you are today, Whatever you're facing today, never give up on God. Because the truth is, the reality is, God will never give up on you. Amen? God will never, ever give up on you. Never. Isn't that wonderful? Never. Never stop coming to the Lord in prayer. Never stop coming to the Lord. Believe that, that, that he can deliver you. That he can see you through your trials. Help you through your trials. Strengthen you through your trials. So that you can have joy in him. So keep asking. Keep coming. Keep praying. Keep asking for more strength. More grace. More help. For joy and wisdom. And for some of you this morning, you need to ask the Lord for salvation. For some of you this morning, you need to come to Christ humbly, repentantly. And you need to confess your sins before him. And put your faith in him for the first time so that he can save you and be gracious unto you. And so that you may experience his love and his help and grace in the days to come. Will you come today? Will you give your life to Jesus? Let's sing in closing. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Love this hymn. Christ, the song goes, Christ is our joy when trials are abounding. Our faithfulness and refuge in the night. Let's sing this to the praise and glory of our God and then we'll pray. Amen.
hearts today. I pray this morning that you would write your word in our hearts and bless it to us. Help us to trust in you, especially through the trials of life. I pray this morning that you would develop godliness and a Christ-like faith in us so that we will endure to the end. Give us today, Lord, more of your joy and more of your wisdom, so that others may see Christ in us, and we will honour you with our daily lives. And we ask this in our Saviour's wonderful name. Amen. Amen. And so, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you more of his peace and his joy now and forevermore. God bless everyone. Thank you for being with us this morning. Stay safe. Watch out for one another. Pray for one another. And we're here for one another. Take care for now. We'll see you tonight at 7 o'clock for the Gospel. We're in Mark 10 again and we have another great passage to consider. So take care for now. God bless. <laughs>